What is up guys, Veos here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to remake the uh, Zomboy Ghost Remix uh, drop sound. So here's what I remade. Okay, and yeah, um, basically it's going to be available for download in the description. If you want to grab it, go ahead and do that. I'll be explaining what's going to go, uh, what, what goes on in here. So let's get right into it. What makes this sound? This sound is based off of a square that's being FM'd by a saw wave, okay? And uh, it's actually a different level, okay? So um, oscillator A is negative one, and then oscillator B is zero. Now, uh, if you do a few experiments real quick, you'll notice that if you FM, you know, same level on these two, or this combination, it's gonna be saw -y. You can get saw harmonics. Which is not so much what you want. If you lower it, okay, and you play it again, then you get more like a square-y type of, um, harmonics in there and what I did is actually I preset it to you know a pitch that sounds like this actual song I think it was 67 something like that yeah anyways and then you do like a bunch of automations and I'll just go over that in a second okay um so f first of all for the automation I set it to the level okay that's like um you know the way I shaped my LFO okay and yeah, basically, uh, the way I shaped my LFO is I made one big bump like that, and the second one has a little bit more swing, if you look at that, because that's what it sounds like in the song. It sounds like... It's not like... Dun, dun. It's like... Dun, dun. You know, like... um. Anyways, if you know what swing is, you know what I'm talking about. And yeah, basically, I shaped that using the volume and my ear to do that. Um, and actually, the FM level is not being automated at all in here. Like, it's a bunch of other things that's making the sound kind of move and stuff like that, okay? Uh, I layered a analog white noise on here, okay? So you just uh, put a little bit of that on. And I'll just get to the sub after, okay? We process a bunch of things. Uh, just because that's kind of its own thing that I added into here. Okay, next thing. Uh, Multi-high pass in here. High pass is a very common filter, as you all know. And it shapes the sound very well, so... Yeah, that's kind of what I did. A uh, very kind of... This is kind of a small resonance level for um, a high pass. But, you know, I just found that there wasn't so much sweeping going on as much as there was, like, just a normal high pass on there. Okay, also, since this is a high pass peak, I just used the frequency here to peak it a little bit as well. Okay, uh, one thing I did was as well as pan. So this uh, makes a different cutoff for each ear, basically, um, which is pretty nice, actually. I don't know if I can actually show you visually, but no, anyways, uh, pan is a little bit to the left on this one. Okay, also, before we move on uh, to the other stuff, uh, I have A, B, N, S doesn't matter, but as long as you have A, B, N going through high pass here, you're good to go. And also, there's unison on the two oscillators, so seven, um, on both and 0 0.1 on both this way you don't have any surprises when you play the song or sound You know it always pretty much sounds about the same what you can do if you want it to sound even more the same all the time Is you reduce it just under like 50% uh, that way most of the time it's gonna be you know that It's gonna sound like this most of the time, you know um, Whereas if you have random on a hundred percent, it's just gonna be a little bit more all over the place the phases and, you know, the phases which are the start of the oscillation at what point in this waveform, you know. But yeah, anyways, um, in this case, I found that um, if you had it up 100%, it sounded more like the original. Because the original is very free to do whatever it wants, it really. So uh, that's kind of why I did that. Uh, anyways, yeah, let's get into the effects page here, okay? So I have a hyper dimension. This is very useful for stereoizing and make it sound like there's a little bit more unison in there. Uh, a little distortion isn't doing very much, actually. The drive is just over 50%, you know, and a little bit of mix. Uh, so not very much of that. Uh, there's phaser and flanger. And here they're kind of mixed in. Um, you know, I don't like having too much of those effects, but they're nice to stereoize your sound and stuff like that. Okay, and what makes the sound kind of phasey and weird and electric and stuff like that? It is the flangs. So if you go in your filters here, flangs, you have all these, uh, you know, combs, flangs, phasers, whatever. Um, so in this case, I used a flang, okay? Just because it, it's kind of like a, uh, it has the effect of a delay, sort of, if you have a really short delay. 
um, you get this sort of flanging effect. And I'll just show you mine as well real quick. Okay, so if you do that and you add um, delays, okay, you get that kind of effect, and that's what I wanted here. Uh, so that's what a flang does, basically. Uh, I've set it to a specific cutoff resonance and stuff like that. That's just kind of messing around real, real quick. Um, you want to get the right, you know, settings, I guess, to make it flang. Just I tried to get the settings that sounded most like the song, really, is what that was. Um, but yeah, essentially you can get, um, by messing around, you can get different sort of sounds and whatever, um, stuff like that. Also, I think there's a delay in the actual sound. If you listen to this without the delay, you know, it doesn't sound the same, right? Delay adds a little bit more kind of dimension to it. Makes it sound more like the actual sound. And that's because in the actual sound, you hear the delay a little bit, you know, um, just after the sound is played. Anyways, yeah, that's there. What I did was unlinked it from the BPM and uh, linked left and right ears, and 39.67, I think, is the value here. Uh, turn the mix down a little bit. Because it can be a little annoying if you have it kind of any more than that. Yeah, delay can be really annoying, but it's great for making, like, rhythm and... Uh, you know, glitchy more thingies make things sound like there's a flanger on there. Uh, it's great for that kind of stuff. Also expanding, you know, making it seem like it's a bit of a bigger sound. That also helps. Okay, uh, I have a chorus on here also. Uh, what I did was reduce the depth because the depth actually uh, it, it, it adds a little bit of a release. <laughs> which can be annoying at times. So if you reduce the depth, that kind of helps get rid of it. I thought it was feedback at first that caused that little release afterwards, but it's actually depth. Uh, you can also reduce the mix like I did um, because, you know, it's a it's an effect. It's, it's good to have, but, you know, you don't want to have too much of it, like all effects, basically. Okay, uh, next thing up on here is a compressor. So I hit multiband on there. I put uh, the automation on the gain and on the threshold. Um, that's how you make sounds like really um, kind of move in a punchy way. So if you just do that kind of, and let's say you have a reverb filter. Uh, let, let's say you just do that. Okay, it's going to be very weak. Like you don't really hear when the um, sort of when the movement is happening. So if you have the gain on, already that is helping a lot. And then the threshold just really emphasizes the volume thing. If you did that without the compressor, you know, you still hear a bunch of that other stuff going on, so that emphasizes the volume automation. Uh, just be careful when you do this to not uh, have the threshold go too much, because what's going to happen is when you're going to play this thing, uh, it's going to take a while before, like, you're going to have this attack for some freaking reason. Um... I know you're going to play your song and then at the drop when this sound starts, there's going to be an attack of volume uh, before. So that's why you really want to stay in short values here of, of what you're doing. For the most part, anyways. Okay, that's just uh, something you might want to look out for. Okay, anyways, back to here. Okay, so you're at the compressor. So yeah, you can do that. Uh, you have all these new features, by the way. Um, in the new serum update, okay, I forgot to mention this here, but the panning on the flanger is actually a little bit to the right. That means the cutoff is on different or offset on both ears, which is something that could be in the song as well. I don't know. And also, there's the mix here on the um, on the compressor, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can also automate like different band thresholds or levels, whatever. I'm not sure, but it's pretty cool. Those are new serum, you know, things. Uh, okay, and okay, then you got the EQ here. This is a high pass once again. Okay, there's a little bit of mud if you listen to that. If you have it uh, without the high pass. Now it's it's weird because I have a high pass in the actual effects chain, but there's a little bit of mud, so I kind of got rid of it using that. And reverb finally to, uh, you know, just add room to the sound or whatever uh so the way i make my reverbs now in everything okay is i do full wet okay i shape my my reverb with full wet that that way i can hear what's going on okay uh so yeah i kind of turned down the decay and size 
Uh, I cut the lows a little bit, so you know there's no sub or whatever shit frequencies down there. Um, okay. So yeah, basically then I, I set the mix afterwards, okay. Now, finally, um, before we get to the effects chain after, it's not very big, but um, I have a sub direct out on here. Okay, and basically what this is doing... Yeah, I think I was a little bit, a little bit um, higher level when I actually did it initially, but uh, um, I'm just like re-adding bass frequencies into there. Because if you listen to the sound, you hear a little bit of, of the, you know, there's bass frequency in there. Um, so that's kind of, that was the point of that. Okay, and I think if, if we leave it here, we're good because in the effects, I boosted the, um, yeah, I boosted that area a little bit. So that's kind of good. So yeah, to reintroduce bass frequencies in here, I added a square wave uh, direct out, okay, with the same automation as this thing. Okay, now in our, in our effects chain, first thing I did was boost the bass level, okay, uh, 146 hertz about, okay, that's where that is. OTT is on there, OTT is amazing for multi-band compression, like in a, at a hardcore level, it's called over the top um, for a reason. But yeah, 32% for that. I didn't want too much of it because it's a bit awful if you have like it super compressed. There's no dynamics. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, you know, you want OTT a little bit on there. Uh, okay, then I have a high pass 109 hertz. I reduced the amount of um, low mids here. That's like the, the actual pitch that this one, that would be it. And I reduced it a little bit because it's a bit hardcore. But, you know, if you leave it... I, yeah, anyways, um, and then I boosted the treble, the noise kind of area, to brighten up the sound. Okay, so that's the thing I did, and also reverb at the end. Once again, I went full wet, no dry, to shape the sound. Okay, I made it, made it like whatever I wanted there, and yeah, basically. And then you mix it back in the way you want. Actually, I think in this case, uh, I used the uh, actual mix knob on here to <laughs> yeah basically i use this to mix it a little bit less uh, essentially but yeah essentially that's how i remade the sound and if you guys like this tutorial please be sure to smack that like button and hit the subscribe uh because there's gonna be more videos coming soon and yeah uh thanks for watching guys have a good day i'll see you later take care peace